I had never dreamed of actually being recognized for the stuff I do because I've always done it. Both my older sisters thought, you know, I was a mute or something. I didn't talk at all. I just was really observant. I just paid attention to everything that was going on around me, but I didn't talk a lot. My mom gave me the, the Dr. J hoop. She gave me the Dr. J uh, basketball hoop I used inside, I used outside. It was a little yellow ball and had him on the background. I think that was one of my favorite gifts of all time. That was everything to me. You know, I could have inside, I could have outside, and a little yellow ball. You know, I just had my basketball with me all the time. I always had candy with me. I always had some sunflower seeds or something. You know, like I was just a, a normal kid who loved sports. And I remember um, I played football, I played baseball, but basketball was always just natural to me. It was always natural to me. I remember as eight years old, I was on a, uh, the eight, nine year old team, and we were just doing two line layups. And, you know, some kids were struggling to get up there. I was doing like reverse cradle layups at eight, nine years old. I was like, okay, this, I think this can work. My biggest inspiration beside my parents, obviously, was uh, Michael Jordan. You know, he just seemed so perfect to me, you know, and to, to watch him every single night, it was almost like a computer or a robot. Like, you knew the shot was going in. Somehow you knew the Bulls were going to win. You knew he was never going to lose. And then off the court, he handled himself with grace and class, and he just seemed like the perfect person to me. I know nobody is perfect, but that's what he seemed like to me. So after God and my parents, it was Michael Jordan. First time in a long, long time. Crawford back at the Bears with a deuce. One on four. One on four. And Jamal's probably saying, bring the fifth guy down. I'm ready for him, too. A 6'5 senior, co-captain, number 23, Jamal Crawford. Jamal kind of, when he came here, he, he took the city by storm. He brought just a whole new scene to Seattle basketball. He brought that, that, that uh, East Coast, California type swagger uh, up here to Seattle. And I mean, he was just such an entertaining player to watch, but he was just such a gifted player. A lot of the things people see him do now, uh, see him do on, in the NBA now, Jamal did those things in high school. My grandpa used to tell me about how good he used to dribble. Just throw it through people's legs, come back, make people fall, shooting it, turning around before it even go in the hoop. Uh, my old coach, Mike Bethea, he told a bunch of stories about Jamal too, just, just how many points he used to score and what he used to do on the court, just all the crazy handles he had. I remember one story, we playing at a rival school, Cleveland High School. So I dribbled backwards all the way down court. When the defender was at three point line, I turned around and faced him. I touched the ground, threw it over my neck, Shot a three-pointer and start running down court before the ball went through the net and the crowd lost it. I think Jamal got so many stories that there's not one or two concentrated ones. In 98, he did the Kobe wraparound, dribble, 
that nobody really did in games at least. I mean, you would throw it through people's legs, bring it back, you'll throw it through your legs and bring it back the same way faster than you could turn around and react to what he's doing. When I went to go see him in high school, I knew he had a lot of ability. But what, what made him different from everybody else is that he went and worked on his game and went and kept the basketball in his hand. Uh, everybody knows he breaks ankles and stuff like that. That is a part of his game. But what the big part about his game is that when he does it, he makes shots. And I call him the, the Vinnie Johnson, the little Vinnie Johnson who used to play for the Detroit Pistons. Got that confidence. Everything really took off at the time. You know, like it was just, I was a kid. After the games, you can go catch up with your friends. There's no pressure on what was going on in the rest of the world or bills or this person needs you for this and that. It was just fun, you know, and, and just to be free on the basketball court. Like I could do anything I felt like doing, and my coach trusted me and my teammates' coach trusted me. So he gave me a lot of the confidence I had. I mean, you know, when, when your player believe in you as a coach, uh, it takes your level to, it takes your confidence to a whole nother level. And that's what he did. It was unbelievable. I still the, the the most fun I've ever had playing basketball. And I have a picture in my barbershop that I showed you guys. It's my favorite picture of all time is when I was in high school. Just to have that freedom and do everything, I was way more. Then I was trying to embarrass every single person I played against. Now I'm a lot nicer. embarrassing because I couldn't tell you a drill to do. Like, I don't do drills at all, and I think that's why a lot of people that handle the basketball, I think mine looks different, you know, and it's just, because I've never done a drill, I've never done get to a chair and go through your legs or get to a spot and, and uh, a cone and, and go through your legs or behind your back. It was always off instinct because that cone is not going to be a 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", wing who's athletic, who can jump and, you know, and can move. So I think with me not scripting anything, my moves are more effective that way. how bad that guy wanted to win. And when he came here, that was the one thing that stood out uh, more than anything. That was my best high school memory, you know, because it was like everything happened. That was my first year playing high school basketball and then to win city player of the year and uh, state player of the year and to win the championship. It was everything, you know, all in one year is time. And I think um, that is the only championship I've ever won since high school. So definitely that was the best moment. He actually got me to go to Rainer Beach. He talked me into coming to Rainer Beach. And uh, he was like always my idol growing up. Michigan because of the Fat Five, knowing that Jalen Rose and Chris and Juwan and Ray and Jimmy, they helped change college basketball. You know, having the, the, the black socks and, and the ball heads and the baggy shorts. Yeah. I didn't care how far it was and I didn't even realize how far it was, but after one of my visits, I was like, I'm coming here. But even before that, I was like, I'm going to Michigan. Before I was eligible to play basketball in high school, I was like, I'm going to Michigan. Ooh. Funny story, I've never, I don't think I've ever said this, but I put my name in the draft because we all had summer school to go back to Michigan. I was so homesick in Seattle. I'm like, well, if I put my name in the draft, that means I don't have to go to summer school and I can stay at home another month, a month and a half, and that's what I did. 
So putting my name in the draft, I didn't really think I'd be drafted that high because I didn't sign with an age. I was like, all right, I have the opportunity to go back to Michigan. But that at least gets me another month and a half at home. And then I went to Chicago camp and things worked out, but I was definitely homesick. I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked because I never worked out for him. I never spoke to him. But it's always like when you know how the draft is when the cameras start coming around at that time, when the cameras start coming around like you're about to be drafted, you know, and I'm like, this guy's a mistake. I didn't work out for Cleveland. You know, so so I'm the cameras start coming around and then eighth pick, Cleveland Cavaliers said Jamal Crawford. I'm like, what? At that time it was just like a dream come true to be selected. I'm doing a press conference 15 minutes later for Cleveland, They're like you just been traded to Chicago. I'm like, what? Like, I always love Chicago, you know, like it was a cool moment. So we're here today, I'm here today, to thank Jamal Crawford for bringing NBA quality basketball right here to the fans. Thank you, Jamal. And one of the things I learned about basketball in Seattle and basketball players is they give back. I've been down to Rainier Beach Community Center where they're handing out turkeys at Thanksgiving. I've been at the Central District with Jamal Crawford. They're handing out backpacks giving haircuts to kids going back to school. Jamal joined our attendance campaign to encourage kids to be back in school. I had never dreamed of actually being recognized for the stuff I do. Because I've always done it. <laughs> like I just didn't have a foundation in place, but I've always done the same thing. He does a lot of things for the community. He does a lot of things helping out a lot of people. And he just doesn't tell you. And I'm happy that he doesn't tell you because he don't need to do that. It's not about publicity. It's about who that he can change a life. If he get a kid that he can do that, and he can get other people that can do that, then I think he's accomplished what he wants to. Since I've known Jamal, we met probably about the summer of 97. Um, he's been the same genuine person since then as he is today. Um, I, I can honestly say that his celebrity status and, and him being in the NBA hasn't changed him as a person. Um, it's, it's allowed him to, to do more and help more people and, and he's taken full advantage of that. Man, Jamal is the nicest person that you'll ever meet. Uh, he, he'll give you a shirt off his back if it's cold, his last dollar in his wallet. Every kid in the community probably has his phone number. You know, he, he, he's reachable, and uh, I think that's very big. Jamal Crawford off the court inspired me to be the person that I am off the court because he wasn't like any other athlete that I ever met before. He texts on me a lot. He makes sure I'm doing good in school, the family. Make sure I'm in the gym all the time. Jamal, he's, he's always done a lot, you know, for our community. Uh, he did a lot for me just coming up when I was a, a high school kid, just always looking out for me. And, you know, he would even buy me school clothes and help me out with my cell phone. And, and uh, he tries to do that same thing for the community. He does backpack giveaways, basketball camps. I've done turkey drives with him, Christmas gifts with him. So this is our community, and uh, he takes a lot of pride in being from it and, and want to support and give back as much as he can. He's truly redefined the role, uh, the role and the expectation of a professional athlete. Uh, he's as equally dazzling on the court. Uh, he's even more so off the court in the things that he does. And probably the most special thing about him is the fact that he's not doing it for accolades. He's not doing it to be recognized. He's not doing it for anything else other than he's a genuinely good person and, and he's wanting to help and give back. What he does is, is that he does things and then he doesn't have to bring the media around and say, this is what I do, because this is from his heart. His heart is what he does. He doesn't have to come and say he's gonna get $50,000 to do something and then bring it on TV. To me, that's nothing. I mean, that's just you wanna be having fame. And I don't think he feels that way. He feels that way because he thinks that he has a, he had a, a big privilege to make it to the NBA, 
and have these great years to do it. And, and he feels like he wants to come back to his community and have other kids live his legacy on. It was like a natural progression for me. You know, we do camp uh, every single summer. We've got a backpack giveaway where uh, you come out for a day of basketball, the guys get haircuts, the little boys get haircuts, and the girls get their nails done, nails and feet done. for me, he just basically told me, because our gym was in such bad shape, that uh, he told me, he said, Coach, when I make it, uh, he says, I'm going to come back, man, and make sure that we have a good, great gym to play in. We used to have these things called Rainier Late Night, we're at about, like, I think 10 o'clock. Everybody used to go there and play basketball, all the, all the best players, play against Jamal, play against Nate Robinson when you're in eighth grade, and they, they dogging you, scoring all the points on you, We're just playing against the best at all times, and them actually caring about us is like huge. It, it made us who we are today. looking at all the anticipation for Katie. First time here since he was a Sonic. now at Seattle's Pro-Am was Doug Christie's Pro-Am and uh, I was on Doug's team. He was the only high school kid on the court so then after Jamal ended up making it pro, the Pro-Am kind of faded. There was no Pro-Am so one year we were just like man we should bring the Pro-Am back and we started really small at uh, Rainier Beach High School and it just continued to grow. We moved into Rainier Vista Community Center, Boys and Girls Club and then we took another step and brought it here to Seattle Pacific University. It gives me a, a great pleasure because the simple fact is that uh, I raised him and to see him come back into the neighborhood and do what he do. This program is so big for this because we don't have basketball here anymore. Jamal is coming back to his home city and doing the things that he need to do and to put this on for people here. People don't understand that the Seattle uh, fan uh, base here is big very big for basketball. In a community sense, uh, it provides a high level of basketball for the community of Seattle since we are without an NBA team. Uh, this is no way, shape, or form replacing the NBA, but you're, you're able to, as a fan, come and see NBA level players, guys that actually play in the NBA that otherwise you'd have to drive two and a half hours or more south to Portland to see these guys. Um, and then with the, the proceeds that are left over, they go to Jamal Crawford's foundation. <laughs> Like they want to, and for him to bring them back and interact to them, 
this is a great thing for him, and that's why they're so they're so into it and they're so big about it because he does do this for this community. <laughs> him to bring different basketball players and different celebrities here and have them. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, he just got married, uh, what people know, a week ago. He brought in the Blake Griffins, the Chris Pauls, and all them. He gave a midnight basketball, and people don't understand, it was 3,000 people at midnight and 1,000 people outside because he does this for them to get this back to them, give back to them, and give them excitement again for basketball. This is huge for the community of Seattle. in my life, like never. He wasn't around that long, but if you saw the growth from, uh, from his first album to his second album, it's just unbelievable. And sky's the limit, I actually have tattoos right there on my forearm, you know, and the words to it, stay far from timid, only make moves when your heart's in it, live the phrase, sky's the limit. Those are the words I live by. And even if you watch the, the movie Notorious, when, when Big heard it, when he was playing it back, he was like, I'm the greatest. Like he knew off that song, he was like, he's the greatest. And, my favorite song of all time. It was crazy, one of my first memories was Adam Sandler at a game. He was at a game and then um, later that night, me and Stefan went to uh, Tao and ate and Adam Sandler was there. And it was like he knew me just because he was at the game really, you know, and um, my first year, Samuel Jackson, I didn't play against the Miami Heat, Samuel Jackson came and I was in a suit and he's sitting across the bench and he's like, he threw his hands like, you're not playing? I'm like, nah, I'm hurt. He's like, oh, like I only came to watch you play. I was like, that's crazy. Like Samuel Jackson's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, when they told me that, Reggie Miller, he played 18 years. And when I broke the record, I think I was at year number nine or 10. So I was kind of like, I broke the record half the time it took him. So that kind of shows it's gonna take a while, but there's guys who can really shoot it. 